Welcome today for an introduction on Emerson's flame and gas detection portfolio and solutions that can be provided to your flame and gas detection needs. Before we go any further, we want to go ahead and ensure that we understand why flame and gas detectors are needed. Flame and gas detection is needed for a large variety of reasons, and four of the main categories are listed on this slide. The first one is what comes to mind most often, and that is personnel safety. Our customers and our company as Emerson want to ensure that everyone is safe at all times, whether it is an unmanned and remote location, or whether it is a large plant with many, many people walking around, we want to ensure that everyone is safe at all times. Our second category is property protection, where we want to go ahead and ensure that all of our equipment and assets are protected and are able to be protected as much as possible moving forward. The third one that is most commonly forgotten is the regulatory monitoring. Regulations are increasingly growing throughout the world and we need to go ahead and comply with those regulations and meet the standards and minimum requirements for our neighboring communities, our industries, and our customers that we serve. The fourth and final is community impact. Our communities are living and built up around our facilities, and we need to ensure that we protect them at all times, give them the confidence that they need to understand that nothing toxic or combustible will be coming into their areas and that they are safe, whether it is a home community, a schoolyard, or other businesses nearby. Releases can happen in the blink of an eye. So whether it's personnel, property, or our community that we're trying to protect and the regulations we are trying to follow, we need to understand flame and gas detection technology and how we can use that moving forward. Next, we want to dive into understanding the fire and gas hazards in the process industries. We have both combustible and toxic gases that can be released that provide hazards to our people, our equipment, and the facilities themselves. The three main categories that we want to talk about is oxygen depletion, our toxic gases, but then also our combustible gases. And those materials, when released, when combined with the oxygen and the ignition source, these combustible gases can then explode, causing fires and damage and injury to people and facilities. Our goal is to constantly monitor the facility's conditions at all times when hazards are present. There are many common sources for releases of toxic and combustible gases. Four of the main buckets that we categorize these into are passive equipment failures, active equipment failures, human error, and intentional act. While intentional acts are less common, they are something that we always want to be on guard for moving forward. And that's either related to sabotage or terrorism. Human error happens a little more often, and that's where we have equipments um, that are opened for maintenance. Incorrect valves are selected and opened or closed, and the failure to close a drain valve. The passive equipment failures can include anything from overfilling a tank, tank and pipe ruptures, gasket sail failures, and so on, such that then we have active equipment failures, such as seals or in rotating equipment. Risk assessment is typically done at the beginning of a facility being planned and developed, designed, and manufactured. Process safety methodologies vary, but preliminary hazard analysis are done in a number of different ways, including the fire protection risk analysis from the NFPA. Assessing where flame and gas detection goes, what technologies are used, and how much to use is going to be different depending on the risk tolerance that you and your customer has. Flame and gas detection should be considered when existing risk exceeds the facility's risk tolerance, as well as further analysis indicating that the risk would fall to within acceptable levels of the flame or gas detection being present. The risks we are talking about with flame and gas detection are most commonly referred to and looked at in both the active protection layer and the safety layer within your plant's process control and safety plans. This is regarding an incident more than the prevention or mitigating as seen in the process control layers or the passive and emergency response layers. 
With that said, fire and gas systems improve the safety and integrity of your plants by protecting them, their assets, and the personnel from hazardous conditions, as well as provide a rapid and coordinated operational response to emergency shutdowns. Flame and gas detectors are but one piece of a fire and gas system. Flame and gas detectors are coordinated, attached to, and controlled via a control system. Whether it is small or large, these are then used to go ahead and control and enable the signaling of other auxiliary equipment, whether it is fire suppression, beacons, alarms, or other miscellaneous auxiliary equipment. The goal is to maximize the potential for detecting fire and gas hazards, and by combining flame and gas detectors with the panels, control systems, and auxiliary equipment, fire and gas systems can then protect our plants and personnel from all hazardous items. Some of the common fire and gas system actions that can be done when using a full fire and gas system include alarm. Any audible and visual alarms can be sent off going ahead and indicating to a remote location or to anybody who's approaching the area or already within the area of any hazards that have come into play. The other type of actions are executive, also known as safety actions. These include activating fixed fire protection, suppressing or extinguishing a fire, pre-arming a fire protection equipment, releasing gaseous fire suppressant, commanding the heat ventilation air conditioning shutdown, or initiating emergency shutdown systems. The goal here is to mitigate the consequences of an incident after it has occurred, and our fire and gas systems can help decide and enable actions to be taken. Layers of protection are sometimes commonly referred to in flame and gas detection. When we talk about layers of protection, we're talking about the different levels of protection that different technologies and devices can provide along the timeline from when a gas goes ahead and breaks containment to as it then develops into a cloud and then if combustible eventually explosion. The goal is to establish the presence of gas and or flames before the consequences of hazards are realized. Using leak detection, gas detection, ventilation, flame detection, and fire slash explosion protection we can then combine all of these to provide multiple layers of protection and further mitigate the risks at your plant or facility. After containment is broken, the first goal and response in the first layer is to detect the gas leak. Our ultrasonic gas leak detection technology provides a first level response in understanding and identifying if there is a pressurized gas leak. Whether it is toxic or combustible, ultrasonic technology can then detect almost instantaneously before anything forms in the form of a cloud. In level two, explosive and toxic cloud formations then become problems and move around the facility based on the wind and characteristics of the area. If toxic cloud forms, our point gas detection can detect when either moving across an IR beam or getting close to a fixed point gas detector. In this level of response, we can detect not only the location, but also the type of toxic gas that has been released. If combustible gas, we can also determine if it's close to explosive limits. When we detect if there is a combustible gas, we want to go ahead and take action there before it becomes explosive. In an event of an explosion, whether it's a high pressure jet fire, wide area explosive fire, or deep pool fuel fire, we then need to rely on our third level of response in defense, which is our flame detection using either optical IR technology or UV IR technology. Pressurized gas release response levels, detect, distinguish, defend, are all combined in providing a multiple layer of protection safety response that then mitigates the risk in your facility or plant. Emerson's Rosemount Flame and Gas Detection Portfolio is wide and vast and has been developed to go ahead and help Emerson and all of its customers protect itself, its people, and its assets. Rosemount's Flame and Gas, while headquartered in Shakopee, Minnesota, has multiple manufacturing locations worldwide to enable short fulfillment and local capabilities. Excellent.
In conclusion, Emerson's flame and gas detection play a pivotal role for safeguarding personnel and plant assets. And as part of fire and gas systems, flame and gas detectors provide a defense toward incident escalation. It is important to note, though, that no one detection method is dependable under all circumstances, and no detector is 100% efficient. Therefore, a sound detection strategy is to deploy a combination of detection techniques and technologies so that one's vulnerabilities may be offset by the strengths or advantages of the others, providing a multiple layer of protection strategy. Emerson is in a unique position to offer a holistic solution to a whole host of flame and gas detection applications and is ready to provide you with those products, application, expertise, and service moving forward. Thank you.